Hey guys, this is Josh Valencia from Good Break Studios. Be sure to check us out at Good Break Studio. Check us out on Facebook by just looking up Good Break Studios and check us out at www.goodbreakstudios.com. Today we're going to be looking at the Slate Trigger 2 drum triggering plugin. Um, I have an example that's a pretty crappily recorded kick and snare pattern. Let's, let's listen to that. So many of you might have heard something similar. Um, it's not the cheapest thing to do to record a kick well. Um, you can do it, but you know, if you're on a tight budget, tight, you know, time time constraints, um, some people just tend to slap a mic up and kind of make do. So um, in cases like that, these songs still need to be mixed and we need to get them to sound just right. So that's where plugins like this, like uh, Trigger, come in handy. What they do is that they let you trigger a sample, so basically a pre-recorded kick sound, based on what's being played so we'll see that a little more later but let's look into some of the features with a uh, trigger here in this browser button the first one over here um, that enables us to see all the different kind of samples we have um, if you get the platinum version you get the ssd platinum kit presets a bunch of presets here a mad amount of samples um, really really nice sounding i will audition one but So there you go, a way to audition any sample, then you just drop them into the slots you want. This is a, this is a preset I made called Metal Kick for this particular example. Um, and I chose, you know, six samples to trigger. So every time a kick sounds, the plugin is listening to it. You'll see the readout here. And it will actually play the sounds together as I've chosen them. You know, I have, you know, these, these two muted, I guess I didn't want them. And then I just blend them as I see fit to get the right sound. So let's listen to it after now. So definite change. Um, good sounding metal kick, nice and tight. I have a little bit of room in there that I could blend in and out. Um, really nice. So basically what this plugin in this triggering section focuses on is getting this readout to be as accurate as possible so they have a gate that you could adjust the input and what the gate's doing is that it is gating what's coming into the plugin gates it to get the rest of that stuff that, that, that you don't necessarily want get that out and make sure that the plugin is only listening to kick this input is going to boost the signal coming into the plugin let's go ahead and play with that So as you heard, as I boosted the input volume, it made um, <clears throat> it made the sound amplified and it was triggering, pun intended, um, on everything that was, that was playing. So every snare, every tom that was being hit in that one track, in this one recording was triggering a sample. Not something I necessarily want. Um, there's also a set of filters over here. So let's say I, I didn't want to, get any of that uh, snare sound, I could just pull this high cut back and uh, it'll cut the highs and anything that's up in that high register. So if this were like a room mic and I just wanted to surgically remove stuff, um, that would be impossible. So you have to use broad stroke stuff like this, but this high cut, make sure that you wouldn't get any hi-hat, any uh, snare. This will kind of work out some of those issues. Um, and then low cut, if you're working on the opposite, if you're working on a snare, if you're working on cymbals, um, you would you would do the low cut, make sure that you're not getting any leakage from toms or kick. And that'd be, um, and that should help you out with that. So I'm going to leave my low cut alone and I'm going to bring my high cut up. And hopefully any, you know, st straggly little snares that made it into the mic are kind of ironed out by then. So let's go ahead and give it a listen. We should check the readout and it should look all right. All right, you see those empty spaces there? Those are actually hits that aren't being triggered. Awesome, I'm only getting the kick sound. Let's go ahead and look at sense sensitivity. Uh, sensitivity is basically how sensitive the plugin is to those um, transients that you're seeing here on the readout. So I'm gonna pull this down. Now I'm gonna work it back up.
Now that sounds like it's getting all of them, dropping off some of the crap. I'm gonna go through to a part where he's really just beating the crap out of the kick drum. So it's da 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 It missed it. It's da 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 Anyway, an issue for another day. But um, generally, this sensitivity knob cues in on how, you know, what is what is playing. As you saw, there was a miss there. So I'd go into the waveform, adjust that extra one that I need to be sensed, and uh, hopefully it, it, it triggers there. This re-trigger controls how um, how close the triggers can be um, and it be valid. So basically, if a trigger is within 70 milliseconds of another trigger, it won't play the trigger because it'll be like an errant hit or something. So um, 70 milliseconds is not that much time at all. So it's a it's a good kind of kind of gauge. Um, if there were some you know really intricate ghost notes, I might want to dial this back down, but for a kick, even with, you know, double kick here, he's not playing super fast. I think 70 milliseconds is just enough. Um, in terms of detail, that actually controls those two little knobs here. So that's, I'm gonna mess with this as it's playing. Okay, what that did is that the waveform, assuming one was more dynamic than this kick, um, you would you would trigger different samples. So this is kind of your um, kind of your velocity. If we're if if we're talking MIDI settings here, we're talking how sensitive how sensitive it would be to velocity in terms of this detail knob. So 33 was all right. Um, just for now, I'll do that. Um, then on the output here, assuming this was well recorded, I could blend in my tone. So let's let's give that a listen. So you could do that, get a little more of the room back so it feels a little more natural. Now that kick that was recorded, it kind of adds a little reinforcement to this one. So I might bring this back. Kind of gives it a little, little bit more balls. I like that. Balls are good um, in this case. Um, there is a an, an output knob. You know, if this wasn't loud enough for your liking, you would just boost it. Um, these are all the different samples I dropped in before. You could uh, solo them. If you, wanted to, if you wanted to audition them again, you could also click down here. And it normally plays them. So you could go back and, and audition anything that you really wanted to. Um, so these are the ones I chose. I blended them just right. You could tune them. So if they weren't working right, if they um, if they have any phase issues, you can hit this phase flip button here. It'll flip the polarity, and you could uh, you know get your stuff sounding better. So there's that. That's the triggering section. Let's jump here into settings. This is more of the installing samples, where stuff is, how you want your latency settings, any uh, MIDI in, MIDI out settings are in here. Nice you know, basic run of the mill stuff. If we go back into triggering, we have a bunch of buttons here. We could flip all the phases. You could save a preset, which this is interesting. This is something that you should actually know. The presets are only saving this part of the plugin here. No other window is being saved. So actually none of this up here is actually saving to the preset, which is a little odd, but something I discovered. Um, maybe it's my version, maybe I need to update, I don't know, but it just wasn't working quite right. Um, and then there's MIDI capture, um, which is nice. You can actually ex export MIDI from this plugin. So let's say you wanted to trigger samples out of Superior. Um, 
obviously superior can't listen so what you're going to do is that you'd export midi out of this plugin drop it into superior drag it to c1 or wherever you have your kick map to and boom you have that as another kick to add if you want to get wacky with kicks this is the way to go so um, thanks for checking it out and yep have fun mixing see you guys